Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Today we're going to be talking about how to get from this to this with the help of something called Milliput. So let's get started. So as some of you know, I help run a big woodworking group over on Facebook called Woodworking UK. And a question that often comes up when we're talking about things like house signs is how do you keep the letters one colour without affecting the wood around it? Now what most people do is hand paint these letters and you run the risk of the paint bleeding into the wood around it. Some people prep the wood first using like a sanding sealer to minimise the bleed. Other options is people sometimes use epoxy resin and pour that into all the letters as well. Now, I'm no good at hand painting and I have no knowledge of epoxy resin so I'd probably waste a lot of time and money trying both of those methods. So I wanted to look for something alternative that worked for me. Now, milliput is something I've been aware of for a while because wood turners often use it for decoration. It also has adhesive properties as well. But what it actually is, is a two-part epoxy putty. And what that means is like most epoxy products, is it comes in two halves. As you mix them together, chemical reactions happen and over time it will harden and set. Typically with milliput it takes about three or four hours. But before then it remains quite malleable but firm at the same time. So it's brilliant for something like a house sign because you can work it into all the corners, all the cracks, push it right in there and you've got a bit of time to work with it before it sets. But also because it's a putty and it's a firm product it's not really going to bleed into any of the wood around it. So I did a sign a couple of weeks ago and it turned out brilliantly, so much so I thought I'd make a video on it and show you how to use it for house signs and show you the great results you can get with it. So let's take a closer look at using the milliput and see how we mix it and start to work it into the sign. So it's less relevant what method you use to achieve your sign. This was done on a CNC, you can hand router it or even hand carve it. What is relevant is you need to give it some depth. This is about 3mm and I'd probably say that's ideal because it gives it enough area for the milliput to grip to but without being overkill. Now I've got some milliput left from a previous project and what you need to do is mix these two halves together but in equal proportions. Easiest way to do that is just to line them up, cut them with a knife and then mix them together. Now what I'd say is typically stick to smaller portions because the smaller you keep it you don't waste any at the end. But what you need to do is start to merge these together like you would be kneading bread or something like that. And as you can see they start to blend together but you need to make sure you get rid of all the different colours in it until it's all black. So we'll just speed this up a little bit now. So it does take a bit of time but as you can eventually see it all turns black and you get rid of all the different marks within the colours. One thing I should have mentioned at the start is obviously you can see that I'm wearing black nitrile gloves and that's just to stop any of the milliput sticking to my fingers. As I say this does have some adhesive qualities so you do need to be careful with the surfaces that you use it on or with touching your skin. Now once you've got it all mixed together what you can start to do is just break off little bits shape them roughly to the area they need to go in and then start to press it in. You can be as neat or as messy as you want. I like to try and keep it as neat as possible because one it means there's less to sand off later but it also actually means the milliput goes much further. So I'll take small parts and work them in rather than just trying to put a big layer all over the top and this is literally as simple as it is and this is one of the reasons I find this much easier than trying to do something like hand paint them and so once obviously it's mixed you just keep applying it in and pushing it into all the little corners and gaps you do have to apply a little bit of pressure but that's obviously to make sure you're getting it into all the areas that it needs to go into. But once it's in there, you just let it set. So to speed the process up, I'll carry on now and infill the rest of this, and then we'll catch up at the end once everything's covered in the milliput.
So I've just repositioned this to show you something. Obviously on this S here, we have some little pippy bits within the oak. Now obviously when you're pressing this in, it will go into those bits as well. For this particular purpose, I'm happy to fill these little gaps with the milliput itself, because it'll just blend in when I sand it off later. But if for any reason your sign does go through something like a knot, you have to remember that it will go into the little gaps within that knot as well. So you may only just keep it tidier when applying it around those type of elements. So once you've gone over all the sign and got the milliput in everywhere, remember just to go back and make sure it's all worked in, especially into the corners on the sign because that's probably the points where it will be the weakest. Now obviously it is proud a little bit of the wood, but what we will do in the next phase is to sand all this back to be nice and flush. Now what you need to do is leave this a few hours to set, at least three to four hours, but I would suggest longer if possible, maybe even overnight, and then it will go rock solid. So we'll leave this to set now, we'll come back shortly, and then we'll sand it all flat. So we've now let this set. As I say, Milliput recommend at least four hours. Personally, I always try and leave it overnight just to make sure that even the deepest sections have gone solid. And it's not just about it hardening, it's also about it fully curing and making sure it's gripped in all of the areas that you need it to within the little letters. So let's move on to sanding. Now you treat this like you would do sanding anything else. Start with quite a coarse grit and then move to a medium and then finally finish on a higher grade just to get the flat finish that you're after. But when you're starting with the coarse grit, work down as much of the milliput as possible and you'll start to see the edges of the letters come back through. When most of the edges start to appear, that's when you switch to your slightly higher grade and again run it over it again and then finally switch to your finishing grade to get a nice smooth finish. Now when you're sanding back milliput, it does become quite a fine powdery substance. So you want to make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area and certainly wearing some sort of mask just to protect your own lungs. So I'm going to sand this outside, so let's get out there and start to flat it all back. Sorry for the dodgy camera work on this, but I just wanted to show you how the milliput can get into the grain. So you just need to keep sanding until you've got rid of all of the milliput in there. So with the sanding done, we can move on to applying a finish. We now have a nice surface to work with and as you can see all of the letters have come out crisp and sharp. Now don't be too put off when you start sanding the milliput back that it goes to a grey. When we apply a finish that starts to bring all the colour back to the milliput as well as the wood itself. Now this is going to be mounted externally so we need to look at exterior finish options. There are lots on the market, various varnishes and oils. A popular choice is something like tea coil but for today I'm going to be going with yacht varnish. Now the reason I'm picking yacht varnish is I want a nice thick deep gloss coating on the sign. Now always read the instructions on any finish that you choose. In particular I'm saying this with yacht varnish because they often recommend a diluted first coat and that's exactly what we've done. I've mixed some in with some white spirits. I've got a little tub pre-prepared that's diluted down. So let's get set up on the workbench behind me and get the first coat applied. So it's a fairly simple setup, a nice clean brush. I've got a scrap piece of MDF with a few screws through just to hold the wood and also catch any dribbles, save it going on the workbench. I'm going to apply a coat around the edge first, making sure that I get into as many of these cracks as possible for protection. Then I'm going to apply a coat to the back, then to the top. So let's get started. So that's our first coat applied and as you can see it starts to bring out all the beautiful features of the oak as well as taking the milliput back to a deeper black. 
And we're going to leave this to set for quite a few hours because we need to make sure that it's soaked into the wood and also that it's fully dry. Then we're going to apply a few additional coats of yacht varnish with a light sand in between each one and that will give us our end product. Just a quick tip, any gloves that you may dispose of, you can use these to wrap your paintbrush in and that just stops them going off in between coats. So let's skip through those next few coats and get on to the final product. So the sign is looking pretty good. It's had a couple of coats of yacht varnish now. Before I apply the final coat, what I'm going to do is just drill two small holes in either side for the mounting screws later on when we put it on the wall out the front. We're going to switch over to the drill press to get that done, then apply a final coat of varnish, and that should pretty much wrap up the sign. And so we have the final sign. How cool is the gloss effect from that? Anyway, so I have to say I'm really impressed with the milliput. It's malleable, it went into all the letters nice and easy, and once sanded back, it's left a lovely, crisp, clean edge to everything. And for me personally, it's certainly much easier than trying to individually paint all of those letters, and will certainly be something I'm going to be using on future signs. I also know that combined with the yacht varnish finish, that this sign has got plenty of life in it, and it'll at least be a few years before I have to touch or do anything to it. I'll finish up the video with a quick clip of this actually being mounted on the wall outside, which I'm about to go and do now. But that is everything for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also subscribe. If you're about to give it a thumbs down, at least let me know in the comments section below as to why. I always love feedback and ways that I can improve my videos. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see everyone on the next video.